This is wooden plastic and does not only look like wood but actually contains wooden fiber, which means I can literally 3D print wood. The color is okay, but it's not that nice. Here's the cool part though. Since it's actual wood in here, we can apply some stain to make it darker. I've experimented with this in the past, but something else has been stuck in my mind for a while. It was my colleague who casually mentioned one time that you could turn up the printing temperature a bit to burn the wood and make it darker. Oh? How hot can I go? A question which we will explore in this video. Obviously, disclaimer, please don't do this at home. Always stay within the recommended temperature ranges for everyone's safety. I've seriously had to consider this while making the video, will this catch fire? First off, let me explain the stakes here. When you 3D print with PLA plastic, you usually print at around 200 degrees Celsius. That's quite hard, but it is what the plastic is rated for and what 3D printers are specced for. It did feel a bit scary to crank such already high temperatures, until I saw that both my printers can handle up to 260 degrees Celsius, and the newer one can even go up to 300 degrees Celsius. I'll be testing with this 3D model that I made. It's small and should give me some idea of what I can expect from printing at high temps. In the slicer I used to convert the 3D model to something that can be printed, the default printing temperature is set at 220 degrees Celsius. So, let's go! Also, I should mention that this video is sponsored by Creality, who sent me this printer, the Ender 3 V3KE. Huh. It shows that it's only printing at around 215 degrees Celsius, though. It turns out that this software has some hidden advanced setting that automatically sets the temperature depending on the uh, uh, average flow, I think. So, let's turn that off. But looking at the printer, it's moving a lot more than usual. It turns out I accidentally set the infill to 50%. So much went wrong with this piece, so I aborted the print. The lines inside are very tightly packed together, which gives it more strength, but uses up more material and takes more time. Instead of 50-50, I usually have about 15% plastic on the inside, and the rest is air. I'll show in a bit what less infill looks like. Let's quickly print another piece with 15% infill so we can compare what they look like. Of course, I have some professional help from my trustworthy assistant, Clara the Kitten. This is the difference between 15% infill and 50% infill. You can see just how much more air is in the second one. It's still pretty strong, and you can even change the pattern inside to get even better results, but for my purpose, I think this is good enough. One miscalculation I did is that these test pieces are a bit too big. They each take about 30 minutes to print, plus some extra time for heating up, so I'll just make this piece a bit smaller. Ta-da! It only takes 10 minutes to print now. I'll print one more piece at 220 degrees celsius for good measure. <laughs> it looks like a tiny piece of cheese. Now, let's crank it up to 260 degrees celsius, the maximum temperature that my old printer could handle, and see if there's a difference. Even before the print has properly begun, I can see some discoloration here, a darker shade. Good, however, I am a bit worried about this string. But, let's go. Ah yeah, higher temperatures causes the plastic to zipper through, something that will probably get worse when we increase the temperature even more. However, it doesn't really look that much more different than my first piece. Let's crank it up to 300 degrees celsius. We also get confirmation that we're going up to that temperature. Even when heating up, we encounter the first problem. It's so hot that the plastic starts pouring out even before the printing has started. I'm doing some sick maneuvers here to prevent the residue plastic from getting stuck to the nozzle. It was a slight issue before, but now we have a full-blown string of wood coming out. Disregarding that, let's see what cooking at 300 degrees celsius gives us. Epic montage! 
Voila. This is the result. It does look darker, but a bit odd. To better see how they differ, I'll put them next to each other. Personally, I think it's more interesting to see the difference between the normal and the high temperature one. The lighting in this video makes it a bit hard to see, but there's a clear difference in both quality and color between them. The bottom of the high temperature one is spilling out a bit, and the smoothness of the slope is much more grainy. The color of the piece gets darker the further up you go, and I'm not really sure why. The string left behind the nozzle was a bit worrisome, so I modeled this piece to test my theory. And, as suspected, it suffers greatly from stringing. Stringing is when the plastic doesn't stop flowing when it should, and creates these strings when the nozzle is moving throughout the air. Which brings me to the conclusion of this video. I think I've demonstrated enough what I think about this. Cool in theory, bad in practice. The quality drop is too pronounced to use this for actual detailed models. I still haven't figured out how to control the colors and make them uniform throughout. If you have any experience with this, drop a comment. I'd love to learn some more about things like this. That's it for me this time. Thanks for watching. Bye.